This is where it means the zombies meet. What's up, Fight Fam, and welcome to Boxing Bros. This is podcast episode 20, but I'm not really sure, so don't quote me, boy, because I ain't say. All right, I'm Caden. I'm here with my co-hosts. I'll let them introduce themselves. What's going on? This is Trev. And this is G. It's TBE. That's crazy that you said that, that quoted Easy E, because I was, like, looking up an Easy E gif, like, right, just right now. <laughs> It's amazing that you knew that was easy. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man. Like, that was a good Jim Jones quote. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was dope. <laughs> Yo, all right. So the first topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is one we wish we didn't have to. So we're putting out videos, and some of them are getting flagged immediately. Not immediately, immediately. They're getting mm -hmm. flagged, and uh, one video got flagged, uh, the Derek Chisora video, and basically not saying that we did something wrong, but that there's something in the video that goes against YouTube's guidelines and therefore can't be promoted, and they cannot put advertisements on the video. And unfortunately... There's one video that must be addressed. It's this one. Our Forbes video that we made a day ago. We made this video a day ago. Um, from what I can tell, uh, we put it up in at, at quickly at a, t at a quick time. And what happened was you can't view this video on your phone. I can't view this video on my phone. T, can you view this video on your phone? Nah, only only if you click on our actual home page and you see the video. But if you just go on a search and type in Boxing Bros, this video doesn't even pop up on our recent videos. Ned, can you see this video from your phone? Only only on our um, on our page, not on like like in the search or recommended or in the like you know in the in our recommended video section. Trill Dollar Bill, can you see this video from your phone? Not at all, man. I can't even see it. I have to search and search, and if, if, if can't even do it through the search. I gotta go through our homepage. Exactly everything G said. All right. Now, mind you, I have a Galaxy, and Ned has an iPhone, so it's not even like an Android versus an iPhone thing. It's going on both. So. And so my theory is <clears throat> because this video didn't violate any guidelines. And there's, and there's a commercials on it. If I look from my smart TV, this video will pop up. If I search from my laptop, this video will pop up. It's only from the phones where this video won't pop up. So YouTube made, made it so that you can't access this video from your phone if you just go to recent content drop. Uh, and it's because we broke some stuff down in this video and I, I, I'm, I guess the powers that be didn't like it, but Go to your home page. Go to go to the Boxing Bros home page from your phone, and take a look at this video. Um, if you have the chance. Once again, it's uh, Fury is the highest paid boxer, comma, not Joshua R. Canelo exclamation point. So please, if you get a chance, go check the video out. Apparently, uh, some for some reason this video cannot be accessed from the phone if you go to recent updates. So you're gonna have to go to our home page. So we just wanted to let that be known. Also, we are going to put the link for this video in our description box uh, for this video as well. Mm -hmm. All right, fellas, thanks for uh, taking care of that order of business. We're going to move on to some topics at hand. The next topic we're going to discuss on uh, the podcast is Joe Goosen said, it's not too late for Wilder to learn mm -hmm. new tricks, particularly how to fight on the inside. Goosen believes if Fury could do it, then Wilder can do it. Do you agree? Let's start this one off with G. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I believe it. What? Now I'm playing. <laughs> uh, no, nah, but actually, to be honest with you, yeah, why not? Yo, um, you know, if Joshua and Fury could show within one training camp new wrinkles in their game, you know, why can't Wilder, you know, Wilder, this is his test to step up to the occasion, you know, um, yeah, um, I feel like, you know, as long as he has the desire and the capabilities, 
you know, meaning physical capability as long as he's healed up and he has the mental capacity to actually learn this, um, these new skill sets. Yeah, sure. Why not, man? You know what I mean? Um, if he can't, then he can't, but I like to believe he can. And if he's anything like the other two gentlemen, he should be able to. And I like what Goosen was saying, like, um, you know, the, the key is to have him in training camp with guys that aren't that good, you know? So, <laughs> you know, nah, but it's like to build the confidence of the fighter. You want to build uh, Wilder's confidence with the inside game. You don't, you don't want to have him work on his inside game with killers, you know, because then he's just going to get dominated. He's going to get violated in training camp, and then it's just going to crumble on the, in the three-peat. So I, I like what Goosen was saying, like the steps that he needs to take in training to develop those skills. And, yeah, why not, man? I'm, I'm, hey, man, listen, I need – I'm going to say this. I need Wilder to be Fury at the three-peat, but if that don't happen, I want Joshua to beat Fury. So, Jeez, hey, man. You're professing that you a Fury hater yo, right now. Nah, yo, listen. <laughs> you know I mean, I've been wanting to see Wilder versus Joshua for so long. So if, if Wilder can't get past Fury, man – I don't know, man. It might be. So basically, you're me. saying that your decision is decided by your need to see. Yes. Yes. Job. I'll be honest with you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it's it's favoritism. I don't care. I you just want to make sure I you weren't hating on Fury. That's all. Oh no, 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 yo, yo, Fury, yo, listen, Fury got skills. He's a dangerous dude. But I just need Wilder to win. You know what I mean? I'm hoping Wilder wins so I can see that that fight between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. So if if Wilder needs if Wilder has the time, remember, now they're talking about this three peat ain't happening until the end of the year. So that's months. He has a lot of time to heal up, a lot of time to study footage, a lot of time to pick up new skills. Like he has enough time that if he doesn't capitalize off of this opportunity, mm -hmm. then maybe he shouldn't be uh, mentioned amongst the elite. All right, Trill Dollar Bill. I agree with G. Why not? Well, half. But with G <laughs> Oh, you do you agree you agree with G too? <laughs> <laughs> Half of what G said. I think I agree with the part where he says, um, Wilder, why not? He can he can learn some things. Why not? Um, long, long time ago on Boxing Bros. If long, you check, long time ago. Long, 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 long time ago. If you check on Boxing Bros. Um, I said the best fight I've ever seen with Deontay Wilder was the first fight against Stavern, where Wilder used the jab, he used movement, he even used the left hook, check left hook. Um, he was doing things that I was like, wow, okay, maybe, maybe this kid got something. After that, he was just listening to JD, the right hand, throw the right hand. And he forgot the fundamentals. And he forgot um, that this is boxing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't agree with the, the whole, well, so I do agree with if he gets back into the gym, that um, maybe he can learn some new things and maybe go back to the basis and maybe fight the way he fought Stavern that first fight. If y'all don't, if y'all think I'm tripping, go watch that first fight with him and Stavern. It was, it was a total different Deontay Wilder. Um, if we can go back to that and go back to the gym and, and learn how to box, because I know he can, he's long, he's lean, he got long arms, um, learn how to box, then yeah, I think he can, he can, he can improve, uh, improve. But the fact of saying that throwing him in there with guys that's less than, I don't agree with that because, um, you know, iron sharpens iron. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to set him up for some delusion. You put him in there with guys and he's knocking guys out and you put him in oh, there with Tyson Fury. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a Tyson Fury out of there. That's his, nah. Put him in there with some tough, it's time to put him in. He's been in there with soft guys his whole career. We've seen the wild the edits. He's been in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, 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 like, the wild audits, you know what I'm saying? So we, um, Put him in there with some tough guys to see if he really, really can, he really has it in him. Is he really, really has it in him? Some tough sparring, some tough camps. He had it easy. Now it's time to, you know what I'm saying? 
He needs to get it all. He needs to get it the, you know what I'm saying? Go in there and get it the right way. Right, He's man. been Rocky three in it. He's been Rocky three in it for too long. <laughs> been Rocky three in it for too need long. Need the eye of the tiger? <laughs> Listen, he need to get the eye of the tiger. I don't know what he need to do, but he need to go back to the drawing board. And I believe he can. Why not? You know what I'm saying? I believe he can. Eye of the Tiger, not the Eye of the Tiger. What's that dude on Netflix? The Tiger King? <laughs> he is Deontay Exotic. So I mean, <laughs> Deontay, Deontay Exotic. I mean, hey, he's Deontay Exotic, and it's true. Hey, look at who designed it. Look at who designed that costume. I will, I will. Look at who designed watch, that costume. Watch, watch your mouth, Katie. Exactly. We'll All right, talk one, about my designs. One, okay. Two, Deont Deontay Exotic be doing them dances. You saw him dancing at the press conference. You seen it, okay? If you see Tyson Fury said it, I'm gonna make some money off of him after I beat him by making send him to the strip club. Okay. There's a lot. And he got a nose ring. So I'm just saying. And he said he wanted to how he wear weave in his head too. Yeah, and he wear weave. <laughs> and he said he wanna know what it's like to be pregnant. So I'm just saying, all right, uh man. Yo, he said that for real. He yes. said that for real. Yes. That shit king, B. That shit king. <laughs> that shit king. <laughs> that shit king. <laughs> Damn, the LBC father of that child. But let me get, let's get to it. We all know this perfect saying, yo. We all know this saying that goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Why you think it's so hard? <laughs> well, it's broke. And De Deontay Wilder got to find somebody to fix it. And if, like, listen, after the first fight with Fury, I was like, he needs to go. He, he De Wilder knew itself. He need to go back to drawing board. And when he fought Brazil, he wanted to practice the skills he'd be learning in that training camp. And like, yeah, I've been working on my game. But he knocked him out with the right hand. And then, you know, I thought when he fought Ortiz the second time, that he was going to work on his skill again. He was working on his game. But no, he was getting beat up. And he was just looking to land the right hand. Then we came with Fury. I was like, nah, he ha literally has to have a different strategy, a game plan for Fury. Or that right hand is not gonna work. It's done. Like it's not gonna work this fight. But now, nah, Wilder, oh, this right hand. All I need is two seconds. Oh, you know, I'm doing it by God. I'm this, I'm that, and I'm just like, ah, oh, man, Wilder, you, you playing yourself. You're lying to yourself. Don't believe. Don't deceive yourself. So, I gotta say, Wilder, if Wilder can do, he has all the time right now to, to practice, to train, to learn something new, build a strategy against Fury. But you, we don't know what Fury's going to come out in the third fight. We don't know how it's going to look. Fury could pop up, drop drop another 100 pounds, and just uh, run around wild in this fight, you know? He drop another 100. He drop another 100, bro. He'll be a he'll be a, he'll be a he'll be a super middleweight, bro. He'll be a light heavyweight. He'll be a light heavyweight. <laughs> All right, another 80. He'll be, like, right there. He'll be on the bridge. He'll be down there with Wilder. But, you know, we never know. You know, he's 275. His last fight, he was 275 pounds. Yeah, exactly. So if he drops 100 pounds, he's light heavyweight. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Well, 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 80 pounds, 80 pounds. I take that back. Well, right I, on my wall right here, I got a poster. If he drops 80 pounds, he's cruising. He'll be a cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go back to school, man. Go back to school. It's all right, man. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry, my... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Basic math wasn't his forte. <laughs> 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 my we are sending you back to first grade math. <laughs> Yo, true left the screen. <laughs> true left the screen. <laughs> I got a poster by the great Muhammad Ali. It says, Champions are made of from something they have deep inside of them, a desire, a dream, a vision. You know, you gotta be you have to have the last minute stamina, you have to be a little faster, the skill and the will, but the um the will the has will to be must, yeah, stronger than the skill, yes. Yeah. The skill. Yeah. And Deontay Wilder, if he really wanna be champion, he has to really embody all of those things. And during this time off, I'm not gonna knock a man when he's down. If he can get back up and prove himself, much much props to Deontay Wilder, but right now. I don't know. The last four fights, he just came in with the same strategy, and we don't know. I don't know. Uh, um, um, Fury did knock a couple um brain cells loose, so, or you know. So, but yeah, that's my take. That's my piece. Wow! How do I follow that? All right, so <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Yo, if this was like a talent show, 
or like yeah, something like that. And Ned just went out there and they're like, you gotta go on next. I'd be like, oh man, you know, the crowd's in the type of state. I don't even know if I want to go out there <laughs> right now. <laughs> but I will try. So, anyways, check this out. For me, saying Deontay Wilder can learn new tricks. Let's look at his career. What has he shown you to suggest he can learn new tricks? I mean, I was expecting him to get better after the Burmain Stavern fight, and he regressed. So he became someone who just relies on the right hand. And talk about inside fighting for Deontay Wilder. If you teach Deontay Wilder to fight on the inside, that means you're taking away the one thing people fear about him, the big right hand, because he's not going to get that leverage on the big right hand from the inside. Deontay Wilder stays in that stance, waiting for a chance to put his whole body into that right hand. That's why he's always injured. That's why he's always hurt. He puts his whole body into the right hand. He waits for the opportunity, and then he strikes with the right hand. And against better opposition, his strategy is just to go some rounds, hope they slow down, and then hit them with the right hand. When people try to box Deontay Wilder, they respect his power. They actually aren't forcing him to get tired because he doesn't need to throw punches to keep them off of him. He's able to keep the distance. Fury figured it out. Shorten the distance. Stay in his space. Take away the leverage and beat him up. He doesn't have the stamina. He doesn't run, mind you. He doesn't jog. He's, he said it in a bragging way. He said it like, I don't need to do all that. I don't need to run. I don't need to jump rope. I don't need to train. They need to do all that stuff. Well, Wilder, you know, you jump rope to get in running shape. You run to get in sparring shape, and you spar to get in boxing shape. Deontay Wilder cuts corners. He just spars, and he thinks that's going to – no. No, there's going to come a moment where – all that stuff matters. All the little things, the speed bag, it matters. When your shoulders are burning and you're still going, keeping your hands up, even when you're tired. All this stuff matters. It looks stupid. It looks whatever. These are the old school methods. You can, you can spit on them and you can not respect them. But when you run into someone who respects it, you're in trouble. And I said this from the beginning. You guys know this. Tell me if I'm lying. Tell me when I said a lie. From the moment the fight was announced, I said Tyson Fury was going to beat Deontay Wilder. The first fight. Am I lying? Am I lying? I said he's, he's a better boxer. He's, he's way better than Deontay Wilder. I said the only way Deontay Wilder can beat him is if he landed the right hand, right? After the second fight, I was extremely confident Fury was going to beat him in a rematch. Because if he couldn't knock him out then, he definitely wasn't going to knock him out in the second fight. Now, at the Fury's knocked him out, you're saying Deontay Wilder's going to learn to fight on the inside. And what evidence do you have to suggest Wilder can learn to do anything differently? You want him to outbox the boxer? You want him to fight on the inside against the man who's better at fighting on the inside? Wilder has the same chance he's always had. Land the right hand. You start trying to make him something he's not, he's going to look like um, Jared Hurd, Swift Jared Hurd, when Jared Hurd tried to box in his last fight. You try to make him something he's not, he's going to look like Ricky Hatton against Manny Pacquiao. Remember Ricky Hatton trying to go in there, slip and slide, and ended up on the floor? You can't turn Ricky Hatton into Floyd Mayweather. You can't turn Deontay Wilder into some inside fighter. Deontay Wilder is what he is. Instead of saying he needs to learn to fight on the inside, he needs to learn how to throw a stiff one-two and then come in with the right hand. He needs to learn how to set up the right hand using his left hand. He needs to learn how to hook off the jab. That's what he needs to learn how to do. So, so you're agreeing that he can improve? Not by inside fighting. Not, not, not by inside fighting at all. But you do agree that there's a chance that he could get better and he could possibly beat a Tyson Fury. Bro, you, you can't get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just being real. He can't get any worse. You're like saying, you're saying there's a chance he can get better. 
there was a chance that Jim Carrey could get that girl in <laughs> right? So yeah, if, if, are you saying there's a chance? Yeah. But I'm saying the chances are slim to none. That's slim. What I'm <laughs> like you dig what I'm saying? All right, we could uh move on from that. I, I don't see anything. And I will be very impressed, by the way. And I will come here and give Deontay Wilder credit, even if he loses, if he shows improvement in his game. I come on here and give him credit, bro. You gonna give my man that credit, bro? Even in a loss, I'd give him credit, because it would show he at least cares about boxing. All right. So yeah. moving on to the next topic, Anthony Joshua praises Fury for his work with mental health issues, and he praises his accomplishments in the ring. But he says Fury is only relevant to him once the contracts are signed and Tyson Fury is on his hit list. Sure, what are your thoughts on those comments by uh, Anthony Joshua? I like that kid. You know what I'm saying? I like that kid a lot. You know? Um, great PR work. Whoever's working with that, yo. <laughs> whoever got his phone, great job. You know what I'm saying? Who's ever speaking in his ear? Great job. Because some of these other boxers need it. You know what I'm saying? Or they just need to hang around this guy. Um, it's hard It's hard not to like him. It's hard not to like this kid. Um, and, he's, and he's right. You know what I'm saying? He, listen, shout outs to Tyson Fury. Um, I know... <laughs> A couple of people in the comment sessions went in. It was like it was all a gimmick in the game. The whole uh, depression thing and all that stuff. <laughs> they went in on Tyson Fury. So he just used that as promo. You know? <laughs> but um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. But and shout outs to him. Um, as fat as he was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. That would make me depressed. <laughs> It's how, how quick it happened. And yeah. Yeah, like yeah. the time period yeah. and, and like the way he, he, I don't that doesn't seem like it. And you seen him. You seen him out in public, yeah. drunk and all that. And yeah. I don't know. But shout outs to um Anthony Joshua. He always seems to take the high road. I like it. I like it. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't uh get involved in the the back and forth bickering. He said once the contracts are signed. Then I'm focused on you. Until then, listen, I'm chilling. And I like that attitude, you know? We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I like it. That's all I got to say about that. That, I AJ, agree. that AJ kid, I like him. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, to, to, to echo what uh, Trill's saying, same thing, man. I like the answer for, for two reasons. Uh, if you don't know, people, we do be uh, reading our comments and everything. And so I noticed that the the UK supporters of our channel were going back and forth with one another, talking about some people are like, yo, Fury's loved in the UK. Other people are like, no, he's not. You know, so seeing that, I think AJ, who's also in the UK, he, he understands that. So he understands like, hey, you know what? Why would I bash a guy who revitalized his career <clears throat> through using a positive message. AJ coming at this guy, even if AJ goes, oh, that mental health stuff was a lie, right? That'll be crazy on AJ's end. So from a political standpoint, he had to praise Tyson Fury from that angle. But the, um, the other thing that I like about AJ for that comment was, right now, AJ needs to focus on Pulev. So he's not looking past Pulev when, you know, that's his next fight. He's like, hey, Fury, once you sign the contract, then my, my passion, my desire, my, my aggression, whatever I needed, to, whatever he needs to take to take out Fury, that's when he's going to activate it. As of right now, it's just like, yo, salute to that man. I like his backstory. Boom. Yeah, yo, keep, keep doing your thing over there at uh, ESPN, whatever. You know, so salute to AJ, man, for keeping it classic. Like that kid. All right, Ned? Uh, you know, when AJ fought Ruiz in the first fight, he kind of like he got it. He would you used to say I'll, I'll focus on the fights, but then he got into that situation with where he would he was engaging with Fury Wilder, like focusing on what they were saying instead of his fighters. And then after that loss, he was like, 
I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about my fights. I'm worried about who's the guy in front of me right now. And everything these guys say is just irrelevant to AJ. So G taught me a proper thing back in the day. It's just like, yo, when anybody just try and tries to get you out your zone, just hit them with the God bless. And that was kind of like the God bless moment right there. Like, it's like, yo, Whatever, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna engage with Fury. Fury Fury's tactics, I'm not folk, I'm not they, they don't they don't bother me no more. So God bless you, Fury. You made it through your 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 depression. Uh, no, I'm not I'll take that back. You made it through what you were going through and you know keep it keep it pushing forward. So yeah. Yeah, so I have a few thoughts on it. I think one, I think it was good that he said that, mainly because Fury ran down Deontay Wilder, and rightfully so. Everything he said about Deontay Wilder was true. But then after he beat Deontay Wilder, then he wanted to say, oh, I beat the great Deontay. Well, it's like, even you even you said he fought bones and everything. So you run down your opponent, then when you beat him, you just trashed your win. See, that's the point I was making about Terrence Crawford and Kel Brook, and then someone said that we sound like Earl Spence. But the point is, if you're going to fight an opponent and you trash the opponent, when you beat the opponent, I could just play your words of you trashing the opponent and saying even you knew this guy wasn't any good. So why trash your opponent? And so if you're Joshua for, for, for number one, you don't want to trash your opponent. Because you want to get proper credit when you beat him. It's the same reason why Tyson Fury wasn't trashing Deontay Wilder as much in the rematch. Because he was more confident. He had that quiet confidence. Oh, I'm going to beat him. When I beat him, I want full credit. See, in the first fight, he had to humble Deontay. He had to let Deontay Wilder know, yo, you're a hype job. Going in. Because Wilder's confidence was sky high. Oh, I'm knocking everybody. So he had to do that. In the second fight, he had the quiet confidence, so he didn't put him down as much. He said, yeah, I could see he's the best puncher in boxing history. Then in other interviews, he admitted Klitschko hits harder than Deontay Wilder. In other interviews. So, one, I like it from the standpoint that he didn't trash his opponent, particularly because when you trash your opponent, it takes away from your win. But the other reason why I like it is because <clears throat> it shows that he learned something from the Deontay Wilder situation. Uh, Anthony Joshua allowed Deontay Wilder to raise his profile by using his name. Every time Josh, uh, Deontay Wilder was able to say, oh, Josh was running for me. Josh was a punk. Josh was this. I'll fight Joshua. He was able to raise his profile. He raised his profile to the point where he walked into the zone and, and, and got offered a deal for $120 million. A guy who was making – a guy who, despite what Forbes is trying to tell you, who had a guaranteed purse of $5 million in his rematch with Tyson Fury, was offered $120 million just based on the fact that he associated his name with Anthony Joshua. Like I said, watch that Forbes video because we already broke it down. They're considering three fights from Deontay Wilder, three fights from Tyson Fury, one fight from Anthony Joshua, and one fight from Canelo Alvarez. So when you really look at it, Canelo Alvarez and Anthony Joshua are really the top paid boxers in the game. The way they, the way they factored it in is funny, but that's also the reason why you can't see our video. But anyways, this guy was able to profit off of using Anthony Joshua's name. So Anthony Joshua's realized, I'm not going to increase Tyson Fury's stock by doing the back and forth anymore. See, I, I raised Josh, I raised the Wilder stock so much, like so much, that he got offered a $120 million contract when he's really worth five. And you can believe that they made $25 million, but no one can explain how. Even in the Forbes article, check the video out, they just say, Dan Rayfield said it's more like, 25 million so it's more like 25 million okay cool so trill when people see my real salary you say it's more like 5 million so that way it can go <laughs> it can go down it's, he makes this much but trill said it's more like 5 million so we just gonna go with trill said and it's well known that trump lied to forbes about his salary and they put it in Forbes magazine, and he was able to use that magazine 
to actually leverage loans and deals when he really wasn't worth the money that they said he was worth. And that would work because nobody so got a history of life. But anyways, <laughs> Josh was no longer going to engage with people and allow them to boost their stock going back and forth with him. That's why he said, I'm done with Fury unless he signs a contract. Once Fury signs a contract, he can have fame off the name. To quote the great, if I shoot you, I'm brainless. If you shoot me, you're famous. What's a brother to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Um, Another thing I wanted to add real quick, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's something that actually that Ned said, and it actually sparked something in my head too. Um, shout out to AJ too, because maybe he does look at it like maybe Tyson Fury was depressed because there was a time that um, um, Anthony Joshua was in a dark place. Exactly. So shout out to AJ, you know what I'm saying? Because there was a time AJ was in a, uh, was in a dark place and he came up out of that. So maybe he's... Uh, Salute and Tyson Fury for that because they both shared that uh, same type of experience. No, that's true. Could be that too. I don't think he was faking though. Right? There's too much there to, to think he was faking. And then that man said he was on a um, bridge talking about thinking he wanted to drive off. He was at that point where he wanted to drive off a bridge. So shout out to Fury though. He came back. He bounced back. All right, moving on to the next topic. Dillian White says the world. The, the, Dillian White says the boxing world and the fans need to demand the WBC give him a title shot next, mainly because Deontay Wilder is injured. Tyson Fury responds by saying he knows Dillian is crying about getting the title shot, but Wilder has a rematch clause, and he doubts Wilder's going to turn down $25 million. Again, is it really $25 million? They will only guarantee $5 million. I don't know where they're getting this $25 million number from. I would like explanations and people to break it down, especially when they didn't break even with their pay-per-view numbers. But, um, yes, so he said Wilder's not going to turn down $25 million. And then he went on to say, he is, Tyson Fury said he's 95% sure the WBC is going to favor an undisputed fight with Anthony Joshua over a mandatory challenge with Dillian White. So he doesn't believe Dillian White's going to get a title shot in the near future. He said, but don't quote him on that. <laughs> so uh, what are your thoughts on Tyson Fury's statements? Well, Dillian White's statements and Tyson Fury's statements, they're related. Starts one off with G. All right, before I make my statement. I wish you would have started it off with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Passing, Actually, I'm going to I'm a, I'm a pass it to my man's trail, yo. <laughs> statement. I already know what he's about to say. Thank you. Thank you, G. Thank you. It's a wise words of trail. Go ahead. <clears throat> <laughs> I, want to, I want to hit them with that last, but go ahead, Trill. Go ahead. Poor Dilly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Take it, G. Take right. it. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna get to that, but you know, we had to we had to start it off right. But um, <laughs> I'll say this because I know a lot of people in our comments be thinking G is just a Dillian White hater. I like Dillian, I really do. However, I, I'm not a fan of Dillian playing his little violin, and here's why. You know what I mean? I could understand if, in fact, the, the world wasn't going through what we're going through right now. Like, you got to understand, boxing has froze, meaning that trilogy fight isn't going to happen until the end of the year. That's more than enough time for Wilder to heal. For, perfect example, right? You know, I, 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 I done tore a couple of uh, tenants myself, right? In, in, in the gym, out the gym. You know what I mean? And what I do know is when you tear stuff, after a surgery or whatever, it usually takes like three to four months to heal, right? So when did that fight happen with um, Wilder and Fury, the rematch? February 22nd. You see what I'm saying? So now, February, March, April, May. I'll even add another month, June, right? So then now, after his uh, bicep um, tendon surgery, he should be good to go around this time you know and so and on top of that i'm gonna be honest i don't, I don't want to say it in the wrong way but because he's an athlete he'll be given the pass to take some type of steroid to to heal 
which would be justified, right? So then now, Wilder may even have a, a, a shorter window of recovery than the average person who goes through that, uh, that type of surgery. So then now, when you look at that, right, on top of this, then look at how the, the Wilder Fury fight's going to occur. It's probably going to be November, December, like the article stated. Again, that's more than enough time from, we're talking about from February now to November, December. That's X amount of months. You know what I mean? I don't want to put, make a number up and sound like Ned real quick. So it's, <laughs> it's more, I know it's more than five months, right? Well, so tell now, him, Ned. Tell him, Ned. So hey, now, man. to me, for, for <laughs> Dillian White to, to petition and beg the, the, the boxing world to force the WBC to make him the mandatory for Fury to fight next doesn't even make sense, right? For the simple fact that, let's just say Wilder's out the picture. If Fury can land a unification, uh, excuse me, an undefeat, a undisputed unification fight with Anthony Joshua, that sets the president over everything else. So that would be the priority. That's going to trump his little mandatory. So there's no point in even complaining right now. Like Dillian is just complaining for no reason. He's just screaming out in, in, in like hoping that somebody says, yo, it's okay. And they're trying to console him, bro. Just wait your turn. If I was Dillian, I would actually prefer one of these guys become undisputed and then you'll be next up in line. You know what I mean? If, if, uh, AJ or Tyson Fury, whoever it is, wins. Because you're the mandatory for the WBC, you're going to have your turn soon enough. And then you could possibly be undisputed. All you got to do is just be patient. Crying and all of that stuff. I feel like, to be honest with you, Dillian White is just using that for relevance. As long as I just keep my name out there, that's some type of support. That's some type of promotion. But that promotion isn't really justified. Like, people who really know boxing know, like, Bro, what are you talking about right now? It doesn't make sense for, for the WBC to even order that fight when the world wants to see an undisputed. I don't know, man. He's just a, I don't want to call him a clown. So let me let me stop, man, before I for my haters activate so on gee, the why comment. why you hate Dillian White so much? Let's tell it ain't even hate. Nah, it's really not hate. It's you know just to me, it's you don't hate you don't hate yeah, it's not hate, it's just I'm I'm a realist. So it's like I'm asking for the people. I'm not like I'm telling the people. I'm asking for the people because right, cool. they, they they come at G whenever he speaks about Dillian. I gotta explain I can, why. I can see it, I can see it coming right now. So right. that's why I'm asking. Nah, so so all right, this is what I truly believe about Dillian White. I do not believe Dillian really wants to be a champion. I think he just wants to be a star, right? He's doing it for the money, which I'm not against. This is prize fighting. You're saying he's a hooker. No, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but because of that, I'm right? Talking he had, left hook. I'm yeah, talking about left hook, exactly. everybody. So don't try to you two. I'm but about because of that, to me, if he truly wanted to be a champion, he had ample opportunities. He could have definitely took the, the fight with Pulev to be the IBF mandatory. We all know this. And he backed out, and his argument was, I backed out to fight Joseph Parker. Not the Joseph Parker who had the belt, but Joseph Parker after the loss. So then now, it doesn't make sense to go after the Joseph Parker fight if you're trying to be champion. It only makes sense if you're going after the Joseph Parker fight because it's a bigger payday. Which, salute to, to Dillian White, get your coins. Not mad at that. And on top of that, we all know he wasn't the mandatory for the WBC. We know it was Brazil. He knew that too, but he painted a picture to the world like, I'm the mandatory. I've been the mandatory for all of these years. Knowing that it wasn't true, but he painted the picture. And to me, that's dishonest, right? And on top of that, when, J uh, when AJ was trying to find a fight, right, he literally offered this dude a contract, right? Right before he, he um, ended up taking the Ruiz fight in New York, he offered a, a contract to fight um, Dillian White, a rematch in Wembley. Dillian White turned it down, saying, like, oh, yo, there's too much power on AJ's end. Even if I beat him, AJ's still the A-side in the rematch. I'm like, bro, it's AJ. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? So then that told me he right still, there. He was still the A-side in the rematch with Ruiz, too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it's because it's AJ. So it tells me he doesn't really care about being champion. He just cares about making money. So now it's like, because of that, I can't really back you the way I would have prior to knowing this information. Because I know this information, I'm like, yo, bro, you're just trying to play the, the boxing community. You really don't want to be undisputed. 
maybe you want to be uh, the WBC champ so then you can have leverage to negotiate a bigger cut against AJ. But even with that, I'm like, bro, it, it was just too much. And it's too much back and forth, too much hating, talking about dudes, wives, all of that stuff is like, to me, that's poor character. And so I can't really rock with Dillian from a character perspective. From a fighter perspective, yeah, salute, man. Like, I like you as a fighter. But that's where the buck stops for me anyways. All right, Ned. I agree. I agree with G on the point. He's trying to stay relevant in these times. You know, it's you know, Dillian. Last time I heard from Dillian, he was on the island training without it. You know, he was looking a little rough. You know, because we all ain't got it. We weren't getting haircuts in a while. But you know, it's just it's just, it's just a tactic. Hey, yourself, man, you weren't getting here because I I could cut my own hair. You right, you right, yo, yo, man. I need <laughs> go. Who is it? So I get yeah, it's just one of his tactics to stay in the news news, just to be in the media, get his name out there, get people looking at Dillian, because you know, ain't much ain't much to talk about Dillian right now in these days. So for him, it's just uh like, hey, WBC, where's my fight? I need my fight. He's doing those type of tactics now where, you know, he knows, he knows the real, like, it's not, it's not, but you're, you're not the main focus. Your fight is on the back burner. And with all this COVID, I just want to quote, quote Trill again, yo, poor Dilly, yo, he pro probably won't have a fight till 2030, man. He's going to see, he's going to get a title fight at the tail end of his career, man. It's crazy. Yo, Ned, it is, it's always you. I'm just going to say, don't even repeat that word, but it's always you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, I'm all, sorry. Good. it's all good. It's all good. Don't worry sorry. about it. Don't worry about it. Mute, block it, you know. Nah, bro, stop saying it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I pointed out to you, bro, it's always, it's yeah, always bro. like the default, I have nothing else to say, so I'm going to mention that. Like, yeah. Nah, nah, I was just, I was just saying the yeah, fights. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up with creative you. ways around it. That's what you got to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to work ways around it, but the fights are pushed back with the situation. I don't even know if we can even say the words that lead to the yeah, words. Yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Just move on, move on, move on. Because of the situation we're all in, fights are pushed back. And poor Dillian probably won't get a fight till. How about just saying because of social distancing? Social distancing, yes. That's not a trigger. I don't know. You know, red flag. I YouTube's with Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Yo, go, go get math in the corner. I was just going to hop in real quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, I've learned a lot about the WBC. I've learned a lot about the WBC. I don't mean to get real serious real quick, but I've learned a lot about the WBC. And as I was, you know what I'm saying? Don't get serious, Trill. Go ahead. <laughs> we be cheating, you know? <laughs> we be as a kid, as a kid, always watching boxing, you know what I'm saying? Um, and wanting to be a boxer. I've always wanted the green belt. Any other boxer that you have spoken, that you ever hear talk, like they always talk about that green belt. Um, it's synonymous with boxing. Dillian White, I think growing up, he always wanted that green belt. But we know how the WBC plays it. They got to like you. If they don't like you, they don't want you to have their belt. And we learned that uh, when Caden broke down the whole uh, Riddick Bowl, Lennox Lewis thing. The WBC always wants the biggest star. I'm not mad at them, but they always want the biggest star to hold their belt. I've noticed that. Either you have to have a big following, a big country behind you, or something. Maybe because they get a certain type of purse. But they always want a certain type of fighter. Dillian, you're not that type of fighter. I don't want to say, I want to say, maybe you do want to be champion, but you don't want no other belts. You grew up wanting just that green belt, that WBC belt. But they just don't like you. <laughs> Everybody ain't going to like you. <laughs> That's what it basically breaks down to. I just think the WBC don't want him to hold their belt. They don't want him to have their strap. And it's okay. It's their right. They don't want him to be their champion or the face of their uh, organization or their belt holder. I can see that because Dillian White has been plenty of times where Dillian White should have had the opportunity to fight for that WBC strap. They just don't like you. It happens in the world. It happens. 
He didn't. He had the opportunity to fight for the IBF. He turned it down. He didn't want that belt. I want. The, I'd rather take uh, the bread over the over over a belt I don't want. He mm. wanted. He has his eyes set on something that he's probably never gonna get, <laughs> unless we the people protest for him and say that we want him to fight for the WBC strap, because. To me, the WBC, they pick and choose who they want to have their belt. I didn't really realize that until one of our episodes of Boxing Bro. So y'all please go check that out. Katie, take us home on this. All right. So I just want to say I vehemently disagree with G and Ned. Dillian White has the right to be upset. And I'm going to share my screen. Dillian White's 27 and one with one defeat to Anthony Joshua. So we'll start from his defeat with Anthony Joshua. He bounced back against the easy guy. He took on David Allen. We're not going to make a big deal about that. But let's go to Derek Chisora. He beat Derek Chisora. He beat Robert Hellenis when he only had one loss. I believe that was uh, Joseph Duapon. Then he beat Lucas Brown. When Lucas Brown was 25 and 0, mm-hmm. he beat Joseph Parker, mm-hmm. Derek Chisora again, Oscar Rivas. Now, those names I just mentioned are as good as anyone else during that time frame, during that time period, and definitely better than Deontay Wilder's uh, resume. We've seen the WBC, of course, as Trill pointed out. Tell Riddick Bowe immediately after beating Evander Holyfield, immediately after beating the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, that you have to fight Lennox Lewis by a certain date. And if you don't make the fight happen, we're giving the belt to Lennox. In turn, they did two things. One, they gave Riddick Bowe a detriment without giving Lennox Lewis one. So Lennox Lewis can just say, either way, I get the belt, so why should I fight him? Act like I want to fight him and then get the belt, which is what happened. So you, you so Riddick Bowe said, okay, since you created a scenario that's not fair because the only person who suffers is me. If you create a scenario where I lose my belt and Lennox Lewis loses his chance to win the WBC belt, then both fighters would have been forced to make the fight happen. Instead, you made one fighter forced to make the fight happen and you made the other fighter champion regardless. He could win it in the ring, or he could win it by default. Either way, Lewis was going to get the belt. Only way, only way Lewis could lose the belt was if he fought Riddick Bo. It's the scenario that they created. So Riddick Bo said, you know what? Take this piece of crap and give it to him. But you're going to have to pick it up out the trash first. So anyway, Lennox Lewis gets the belt. Cool, WBC. But what you showed in that moment is, If you really wanted to, you could put the pressure on someone, right? So why did you let Fury, a man who was off for two and a half years, be a voluntary for Deontay Wilder? Why didn't you do him like you did Riddick Bowe? Why? Riddick Bowe just won the damn title. You couldn't even give Riddick Bowe one voluntary after he won the title. Not one voluntary. Immediately after winning the title, you said, no, you got to fight Lennox because he beat... Uh, Razor Ruddick. So now you got to fight Lennox. And if you don't fight Lennox, he took punishment in that fight with Evander. Go watch the fight with Evander Holyfield. I think any everyone will admit Evander Holyfield is an all-time great. Riddick Bo just beat an undefeated all-time great in the ring to become undisputed heavyweight champion. And as a reward, you got to fight Lennox Lewis next. And Lennox Lewis fought a easy touch, a guy who Mike Tyson beat twice, a guy who Mike Tyson knocked out before he even stepped in the ring with him. And so that shows you the WBC's mindset. And for all you who want to say I'm a Lennox, this is no slight at Lennox. I like Lennox. Lennox was one of my favorite fighters watching growing up. I made sure I watched every damn Lennox site, so don't spare me that. I'm just not a fanboy. I'm just telling you the truth, because I like Big Daddy Riddick Bo too. They created a scenario where they wanted this to happen, so they made it happen. And they don't want Dillian to get that belt. Whatever you want, they don't want Dillian to get that belt. Because how do you let a man off for two and a half years become a voluntary? And they and that's why when some people come on the show, like you know, boxing, like you even how dare you ask me that question? 
I don't just look it up now. I actually watched it when it happened. I don't have a phone in front of me looking up stuff because I can't go. I go off the cuff with it. So stop it. Like if you dig, like you can say, like I, I just, I'm just telling you the truth. And then now, when Vasily Lomachenko doesn't fight Devin Haney, they email him the belt, and then they take it away, and they email it back to him again. <laughs> That's the WBC. They do whatever they want with their belt. So come on, man. You can spare me this. You don't want Dillian White to have the title. And you wanted Deontay to keep the title, so you kept making his man, giving him mandatories that sat on the shelf for two. How about making a mandatory have to fight to keep mandatory status? No. You got uh, Bermain Stavern coming off a layoff, and you got uh, Dominique Brazil coming off a layoff. Looking terrible against Carlos Negron, and then you say, "Oh, yep, now I'm giving to Deontay." Deontay Wilder was so worried about him. Deontay Wilder was holding up his baby and got up like, "I'll beat you without putting this baby down." That's what oh Wilder was <laughs> thinking in his head. Like, so, so stop it, man. Yo, so one, Dillian White has all the grounds. He's paid the money. He's paid the sanction and fees. He's fought the fights. He's fought the better names. He's his resume. It's better than Fury's and Wilder's for their last few fights. You just saw the names. What more does he have to do? But like Trill said, she's just not that into you. <laughs> <laughs> They're not into you. Bro. And you're right. People have to demand certain things. And lastly, I'm sorry, man, this gets on my nerves. I, I just think. Right, go in. Go with in. All, with, all the, with all the YouTube channels and the YouTube community that keeps it real. We need to come up with the people's belt, where the YouTubers, where we decide who's the exactly. actual champion, where we decide who, like, who we feel like should get, get the shot and who won these fights. Because these officials, and, and what it's all slimy. There's a, I see a lot of shady business, a lot of slimy business from, from me watching the Revian Chanko get robbed for Triple G. Yeah. Some of the uh, decisions that go against fight, certain PBC fighters, like Ugas beating Sean Porter, not getting the decision, costing him a title shot, to Dillian White never getting his shot. There's a lot of slimy things in boxing, and I feel like we got we to gotta call it out. But we can only call it out if the platform we're using doesn't block us, exactly. doesn't take our videos and say, well, guess what? No one can view this on your mobile phone, although you never violated any rules. What kind of stuff is that? That's why like I was saying to G, we may have to take some of these segments and put them on Spotify as well. Put them on I put them on iTunes. We got our podcast. Maybe we should start. That's how we should probably back it up. But anyway, I'm just gonna say this. Dillian White is well within his right to be upset. He's well within his right to be frustrated. It reminds me of certain situations I've been in, where I come from. Well, I've done everything right, and I gotta work twice as hard to get less. To get half as much. That's not right. Yeah. That's not right. For real. Cool. Yo, but I will say this: I actually agree with everything Caden just said. I'm more concerned about you know the WBC ain't rocking with you. You know they stand for we be crooks. So are you just gonna stand around and just constantly get ignored, abused, disrespected by the WBC, or do you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere else. Now, he has the right to stay. Cool. But it's clear as day, they not rocking with you. So, to me, I look at it like either take him to court or, yo, just take your, take your show on the road. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Because it's like how long you going to wait? Because, again, you got to think about it. The unification, right? That's probably going to be what? After the, the, the Wilder Fury 3 fight. Then next year will be the AJ versus uh, whoever, right? Then they're going to do a rematch. So then pretty much what we're saying is Dillian is going to get his shot, if anything, like what, 2022? You see what I'm saying? So what's the point of even complaining right now? You know for a fact they're not going to give you that fight over unif uh, over uh, Undisputed. So it's like you're just crying just for crying's sake. I That's disagree. What I think it's letting it be known. Sometimes, sometimes you got to let it be known, bro. You know what I'm saying? So the world don't forget about you. Like, boxing is crazy, and, and you can tell with other, like, rap and other stuff, you have to be, stay relevant, or people will forget about you. 
they'll move on to the next person. And and I don't see nothing wrong with Dillian White saying, look, yo, guys, I'm still here. Don't forget about me. I don't pay my dues. I'm here. But like I've been saying since the first episode we ever talked about Dillian White, they don't like him. They don't like him. But who's... It's not for us to say to Dillian, you know what, stop, stop with this because you want this dream of having this green belt. You need to stop protesting. Who are we to say that? Who are we to say that this, that this might be his dream is to have the green belt. Like I said, I know a lot of fighters growing up, all they thought about was the green belt. I know Caden, Caden was really a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bro, when you was fighting, what belt did you idolize that you wanted to have? The green belt. The green belt. So to tell Dillian White that he got to put his dreams aside and not try to strive for his dreams or his goals, which is to have that green belt, it's crazy. I think he should stomp his feet and wave his hands and let him know that he's still here, even though we know that they don't like him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and also, like, to just jump in on what Trill said, like, you're telling him to just sit down and be quiet when it, if this service is being done? I, I disagree. You wouldn't feel that way if it was being done to Deontay. You wouldn't feel that way if it was I being done to I definitely would. Nah, hold on. Listen, I'm going to tell, tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this. Anytime people are telling you to sit down and be silent with your feelings when, when injustices and uh, inequality is being done to you and you do it, you should slap yourself. Dillian White has the right to fight for that title, not because you know it's his, because he earned it. He's so not asking. Not, but he's no, not, what I'm saying is he's not fighting though. He's complaining because if he's actually fighting, take him to court. You know, like if you truly believe you got a shot and you truly believe they're supposed to give you that fight right now, just take him to court. You know what I mean? If you think the 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 Wilder injury justifies you to to take that that fury fight over the wilder trilogy just take him to court you know what i mean but to me it's like going on social media that's not protesting that's so just how, how, how do you suggest that how do you suggest that being done? let me just let me just help you for a second mm -hmm. for starters things are being handled remotely in courts so you have to file remotely in most mm -hmm. courts and they're only hearing certain type of cases remotely. People can't even get in the courthouse unless they have essential matters. People can't even get in the hospital unless there's like a serious emergency mm -hmm. right now. So one, Dillian White wanting to get his title shot, he's not going to get into court before this fight is slated to happen. And even if he does get into court and he does get to file this case, it's going to take longer but by the time this case is even heard, that fight's already going to happen. So all the things you're saying, right, it really can't apply and it really can't happen right now because nothing's going to stop it or delay it. And it's social so media. Oh, yeah. And social media is the new court. We don't see people get pressured to do certain things politically or in law and whatever has been taking place because of social media. If people getting together and, and and coming together and saying they want this to be done, if the people put enough pressure against something, social media has worked. It has worked in the favor of many people before. You know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, G. When is it going to be enough? When is enough going to be enough? You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's the WBC. When is enough going to be enough? What else does Dillian White have to do, you know what I'm saying, for y'all to be like, he deserves to be able to wear your belt? Because that's where it seems that that's where his goals and his dream is. He doesn't want the red belt. He wants the WBC belt. Go I think he wants a belt, but the WBC belt maybe. I think he'd take any belt, but like you said, I think he I think he doesn't want the green belt. But another thing, you have to look at it like this too. If he goes to war with the WBC, there are going to be other sanctioning bodies that are going to see that. And they're going to say, we don't want to make Dillian White our mandatory because you know he'll probably sue us too. It's like if you had a, a job and you had a reputation for doing certain things, people, it's going to be harder for you to get another job. Mm -hmm. Although you know you're dealing with some, something that's unfair, I'm sure, you know, lots of people for lots of reasons experience a uh, work environment that isn't always fair, uh, where work isn't being distributed uh, equally uh, among people, and maybe someone's pulling more weight, and maybe, you know, some people are doing things outside their job description, but if you start complaining about it, if you make a big fuss about it, then you'll 
hurt your chances of growing, getting better opportunities, getting good recommendations, all types of things. So there could be lots of reasons why he's not going to court. I feel you, though. Stop talking and do something. But sometimes, right. you know, the only thing you can do is let the people know. It's like, like, how about this? Knock out Pavekin. Like, destroy Pavekin in your fight. Make the people go, yo, Dillian's that dude. We need to see Dillian fight the champ. Like, because right now, to me, I don't really see that demand on social media for Dillian like that. Yeah, he has his fan base, but people aren't going, like, hella hard for this guy. Yo, Wilder has more supporters than Dillian on social media. I, I agree you know with saying? you, and that's, the, that's what I was talking about, the WBC. They pick and choose who they want. If you have a fan fair, you have a lot of fans, or you have a country behind you, or something mm -hmm. like that. I agree with you, Trill, on that 100%. Yeah. 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 You know, and that's why it sucks. So it's like, to me, it's like, all right, if I was in Dillian's shoes, I'm being honest, just like in my previous job, I was like, you know what? They're not giving me that shine that I'm looking for. I see the glass ceiling, I'm out of here. What I do, I just took my show on the road. Dillian should do the same thing. That's just my opinion. He can well, stay. Okay, okay, he took his show on the road. Mm -hmm. But you didn't you didn't go to court for the shine you thought you were supposed to get. Right now, if you go to court nah. for the shine you're supposed yeah, nah, to I agree with you. you make that type of fuss, you probably don't get to take your show on the road. Cause then the other people are like, ah, we don't want to touch that. Mm -hmm. We don't want to touch I, that. I agree. Yo, listen, I agree one thousand percent. Because there are ramifications towards your actions. If you take it the, the legal route, then you know. The, the other um, sanctioned bodies, I'm like, oh, I don't know if we really want this guy. I get it. But however, this is another thing I'm, I, I look at, like, when is it where a fighter could be bigger than the belts? I think Canelo is bigger than the belts. Why? Because he takes the big fights. And so if, a, uh, if like, a, one of the belts is like, you have to fight this person, Canelo's big enough to be like, I don't need your belt, yo. You can have it. I think Dillian should focus more on that. That's why they did that. Why do you that, think that's, they my point. Hence, that's why WBC why be crooks? I don't trust the WBC. They got diamond belts. They got they got all kind of belts, franchise, but all of these belts. Oh, yo, you just reminded me of something. And that's another thing that uh, Dillian said in the article. He said he was willing to fight Tyson Fury for the diamond belt, but Fury refused. And then somehow, after Fury refused to fight him for the diamond belt, Fury was able to get a shot at Wilder before him. We be crooks. We be cro yo. That that right there told me, yo, bro, go go somewhere else, man. Like go to IBF route. Go to WBO route. Go to trying w to make Deontay Wilder a star. It just backfired. You know what I'm saying? It just. I don't even think no, that backfired. It worked because they like Tyson Fury with the belt oh. more than Wilder now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right, yo, Trill. Yeah. This I'm like. Yeah. This well, what I honestly believe. Tyson Fury. When they pick Tyson Fury, come on. We all know they picked Tyson Fury to lose that first No doubt. Nah, nah, yo, 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 Trill, this is I, my conspiracy I was with theory. you, G. That first fight, I said Deontay Wilder was going to knock him out. That first fight, I said Deontay Wilder was going to knock him out. Mm -hmm. I seen the way he got outboxed. That second fight, we watched it on, you can see it on Boxer Bros, said Fury was going to win. You know what I'm saying? Nah, but this is what I honestly believe that the WBC was hoping. They want that Joshua money. That's what they want. Joshua is the one that generates all of that bread. I think it was like Deontay Wilder's a stepping stone to Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury at the time was just supposed to be a dude that had a name because he's the one who beat Klitschko. Delineate. Get that on the resume, and then let's set up the big fight with Joshua. Just come to happen that Fury messed up the game plan. He threw a monkey wrench in the whole situation. But WBC, that's why I think they, we be crooks. They're more concerned about the bread. Who is a superstar in the division? They trying to get to that Joshua. And then once Joshua gets that WBC, I guarantee you Joshua's going to now become the franchise WBC champ. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's all slimy. To me, if I was Dillian, I don't want no parts of this no more. I, I like, know, you know franchise what? I WBC in heavyweight division. I know how the WBC. Nah, well, I don't know because Wilder said they offered him the WBC franchise. He Wilder was already the was already the franchise champion because they never forced him to fight anybody. You know but that's what I'm saying. But he literally said he turned down that belt. Let it go that way. He never have no franchise belt for none of them guys. What the only person that should have a franchise belt is Canelo. I stand exactly. on that. That's yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree with that too. Someone who's moving up and down in weight to make mm -hmm. big fights. That's it. Exactly. Heavyweights only one division. 
You don't need a franchise champion in the heavyweight. In fact, if Tyson, if Mike Tyson comes back, give him a franchise belt. If Holyfield comes back, give him a franchise belt. If these old heads come back, give them a franchise belt. But what, what oh, you know what? Usyk could get a franchise belt because at least he he could go back down to cruiserweight. You can give him for yeah, you can give him a franchise belt at cruiserweight. Yeah, exactly. You know what? I just thought about it. We I can get a WBC belt. <laughs> oh no, for real. Just think about it. All y'all got to do is get my followers up. My followers up on IG. <laughs> All right. They going to give me a bill. As long as I get my followers up. So, guys, uh, everybody out they'll there. Sanction, they'll <laughs> sanction trip. <laughs> <All right. laughs> hey, man, you get your followers up. You know Eddie Hearn will get you a fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> followers up. Get your followers up and you get the WBC bill. That's, that's the trick. No, nah, truthfully, man, it's it does suck. But being completely honest, um, Fury cut the line. It's not right. But I didn't complain because I like the, the Wilder Fury fight. Mm -hmm. And if they make if, – if Fury beats uh, Wilder and then they make the fight for Undisputed, Joshua versus uh, Fury, I'm not complaining about that either. In fact, I would prefer that mm -hmm. over the Dillian White fight. But if you're Dillian White, you're saying, at what point do I get my shot? And you're saying that I've been done wrong, and I can't lie, that's true too. Now, he wants the people to make a fuss. But but I have to be – the one thing that I would say that G hasn't pointed out, and that's why I want to make this point, is the people would prefer to see Undisputed over exactly. Dillian White get his mandatory shot. And I think that's what stops the outrage, and that's what stops the uproar. See, I would be more up in arms about this if – Tyson Fury fights someone else Bingo. other than Anthony Joshua, and then uh, Dillian doesn't get his mandatory. If that happens, you, I, Dillian White, you got me. I'm out, I'm going ham. But if if Tyson Fury fights Joshua for undisputed, or if Wilder wins and he fights Joshua for undisputed, I'm not, I'm not arguing about people fighting for undisputed champions. So I think that's where his issue lies. Yeah, and let me say, I, I, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna throw. Uh, Dillian White a bone. In my heart of hearts, I believe Deontay Wilder ducked Dillian White. They, you know what I mean? It's proof. Like, he literally said, yo, I could freeze you out. That, to me, is just another way of saying, I don't want to fight you. I'm ducking. You know what I mean? So, I'm not bashing Dillian. I just see it from a perspective. But I can give credit where credit's due. I do believe Deontay Wilder ducked Dillian White. I don't believe Fury is ducking Dillian White because it doesn't make sense to go down when you can go up. You know what I mean? Like, because uh, Fury has a potential of fighting Joshua, yo, Dillian, fall back. You wait after I fight Joshua. That's how I look at things. Yes, and I agree with one thing you said, which is that Dillian could have fought AJ, but he turned that down. Down, so exactly. You know, it's not the WBC, but it's still more money Thank and it's you. still belts. And then you turn that down. So you so you turn down a shot at the title. Uh, at the titles. Remember, he should have four titles. More titles. The green belt. <laughs> but they, I, I, I chose what he want. Want the green belt. He want what he want, and he want it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing is, though, it's kind of like, yeah, but if let's say he fought Wilder, he would make still way more money fighting Joshua. So to me, yeah. it's like, yo, your big payday is still with the All right, well, listen, division. he feels like it's, it's easy work and he gets his dream belt. You know what I'm saying? You know what? And, I, and that's where I give you credit, Trill. That's what it probably was. Yo, he probably looked at Wilder like, Wilder's food. I could take out Wilder, get that WBC, and then I got leverage to go up against Joshua. That's what I think it really was. Yo, listen, regardless of what Dillian White fans want to say, he knows deep down inside Joshua will put him on his behind. Mm -hmm. So that's the very last route he wants to go. He can say whatever he wants. Like all these fights can say whatever they want. It's in your actions, how you really feel. Thank you. And Tyson Fury felt like Deontay Wilder was the easy road too, because if he didn't, he would have, he would have took three. He fought Deontay Wilder the third fight in six months. He would have did that to Joshua. If he felt like Joshua was the easy touch, but he know better. So um, all right, we're gonna have to move on, man. We gave Dillian, we gave Dillian a lot of time. We gave Dillian, a, you got the spotlight you wanted, Dillian. You got the shine you wanted, Dillian. I want you, Dillian, just not over undisputed. 
Thank you. That's I'm the same way. Undisputed. and myself, we actually agree on that. (laughs) But we get it. (laughs) I get it. (laughs) We be crooks. We understand. Trust me. You know. Yeah, and I would rather see Dillian over Wilder Fury three, but it's in the contract, bro. Thank you. Yes. Fury would never have the belts if he didn't put that in the contract. And I've been saying honor contracts from the beginning, although there was a time when G and Complex weren't a big fan of honor and contracts. Listen, but we're going to let that slide. And these guys is talking, like they were talking about a full fight after the second fight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. I don't even want to get into that. They honoring contracts, all right. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move on to another topic that has taken over boxing bros and is developing a life of its own. It's the love box. The love box, as Floyd put it. You have Floyd Mayweather over here. You have Javante Davis over here. You have Devin Haney down here. And you have Adrian Broner down here. Hence, the love box. All right? Love box, episode three. Adrian Broner, in an interview, said that Floyd Mayweather training Devin Haney is some B A ish. So I'm gonna try to he said it's some beach, beach, I said beach, some beach asp ship. <laughs> he said it's some beach ass ship. So um that's what Adrian Broner said about Floyd Mayweather training um Devin Haney. And Floyd Mayweather said that he's going to continue to help young black American fighters grow. He sees no problem with him training Devin Haney because Devin Haney and Tank are never going to fight because they're going to be in different weight classes. Now, we're going to turn to our resident expert on the love box, uh, Trill. What are your thoughts on uh, those comments? Um, The comments from AB? Okay. Well, both. Because uh, AB says first, the love box, bro. This is this is the love box. box. So you it's got love box. and I'm gonna I'm I'm break down the the love box. Okay. Can I give a disclaimer before you go? Please. Nah, you don't have to. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm a trust troll. I'm not gonna give it. Go ahead. Um, uh, AB, this is me and you talking. Okay. <laughs> Wait. The hey, Steve. Yo, what's what's the what you said? I already do a top of the world as a whole. In all the other people's faces you see on the screen. Go ahead. <laughs> A.B., it's me and you. What up, twin? In this situation, right, you know, typically, right, you would agree with an action that a Floyd would do. But this is boxing. This is not the streets. You can't bring the street mentality into boxing. Stop confusing the two. If one was your man, if we were in the streets, right? And one was your man and your man had an enemy. And then your man stopped talking to you over some stuff. And then he started riding with your enemy. Now that will be considered where Adrian Rona said. This ain't the streets. This is boxing. You know what I'm saying? This is boxing. And you bringing that, it's, this is why a lot of people don't like you, bro. Because this has nothing to do with that. You have to take that out. We ain't in the streets. We're professionals. Okay. And that street matter, yeah, that is. Floyd handled it. Now to go to Floyd's comment. Floyd handled it perfect. Yes, he's going to continue to help out young black athletes. Do I think the way Floyd did it was wrong a little bit? Because look, these guys was going back and forth. Devin Haney and and Javante Davis, they were going back and forth. They had words before. Devin Haney say, oh, knock his young butt out. You know what I'm saying? Not in those words. You know what I'm saying? Devin Haney just trying to make a name for himself. So of course he's going to talk mess to the guy who already got a name over there. So they were already bickering and battering. So now Floyd, you feel like since um, you know, taking taking your advice or listening to you. Now you want to kid it just looked funny. But I know it's probably coming from a good place. Roger just died. You're going through a lot of things in your life. And you do want to become a trainer. And this is a kid over here that's trying to be great. He wanna listen. 
I get it. But do the outside looking in and to the people that's looking at it not business wise or looking at it as it boxing and they're looking at it on some street stuff, I can see how it can look a little funny. But like Floyd Mayweather said, also went on to say, Devin Haney after his next fight, he's moving up to 140. Tank is fighting at 130, going to fight Leo Santa Cruz at 130. These guys is never going to meet. So what are you talking about? Adrian Brown is talking about, no, not just boxing. He's talking about the relationship factor. How are you going to be around a man that had beef with somebody that you was rocking with? And Floyd's looking at it like, that's not my man. That was just my fighter. And I'm helping young fighters. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I think that comment is coming from, from AB. And AB, please, man, get into the gym. You worry about you and getting in the fight shape. And you trying to get that $10 million. <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you focus on that. Leave these men and this problem alone. Because it's only when you, you jump into other people's business, it's only going to make you look even worse. But I get it. I can get why he can say that. Because on the street level, I can see that. But this ain't the streets. You have to leave that out of this. This is boxing. Professional. Boxing. All right. G? I actually disagree with Trill on this one. Um, I, I, I feel like what Mayweather is doing is messy. And so it could be perceived as he's getting involved between these two young men's beef with each other. You know, and so I kind of understand what AB is saying. And on top of that, this is my first time hearing that uh, Devin Haney and Tank are never going to fight. Like, I don't see why they can't fight at 135. Like, let's just be real. Yeah, Tank may, he's going down to 130 for the Leo Santa Cruz fight, but he's always walking around, like, probably around 145, 150 anyways. So it's nothing for him to gain five pounds to take that uh, Haney fight. And not to mention, Haney is the WBC regular champion at 135 right now. So they can fight, you know? And so maybe Tank is looking at it as, yo, are you trying to give him pointers to beat me, you know? And so because of that, I could see the, the frustration on Tank's side. And I could see why AB is like, yo, Floyd, man, that, that that's sloppy. That, that, you know what I mean? So that's how I'm taking it as. But, um... That's what I said. I, what part do you disagree with me? Because I said all that. Oh, no, no. But what you're saying is it's wrong for uh, for AB to think that way. I'm like, I, I don't no, no, think no, it's no, wrong. No. I, said, I think he's justified in how he's thinking because even from – I know you're saying, like, yo, this is boxing, it's business. I still think it's breezy from a, a, a business yeah. perspective anyways. I said it. I said it. I said it. Floyd's playing the game. But – on the other side, I still think Floyd is really trying to train a fighter that really wants to listen. He yeah, really I, wants that's, to That's where I agree. I, I do agree that he probably... Floyd's being him. messy. I said Floyd's being messy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But Adrian Broner coming out his mouth to say that, I think he's confusing some of the, 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 the two together. I think he's mixing some of the two together. Nah, nah I, that's what, this is where me and you disagree. AB's probably like, bro, like, Tank is signed to you. Like, what are you doing? Like, Tank is signed to you. They're both in the same division. Like, to me, that's crazy, you know? So, it's like, but Floyd's they're not just, in the same division. But they're not. Yeah, they are. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking, hold on. Who who got the um the the WBA regular? That's Tank, right? Tank got one of those in the 135. He got one of the 135 belts. And Haney got the WBC the belt. At 135. So they're still in the same division. And, and, and let's just say they're not in the same division. Bro, 130, 135. Mm-hmm. I, I view those two divisions almost the same. You know what I mean? So because there's nothing for Tank to get into 135. And there's nothing for uh, Haney to stay at 135. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it looks messy. But Floyd's justification, I think, to me, is cool. Because now if, in fact, Devin Haney is going to just go up to 140, then there isn't a problem if you believe Floyd. You see what I'm saying? But this is new information, at least for me. The, I didn't know this going into this. So, But now that I know that, then I could kind of be like, all right, yo, you know what, Floyd, I give you the pass. But before then, I'm assuming A.B. didn't know that information either. So A.B.'s like, yo, this is this is slimy. 
you know, which to me, I actually agree with uh, AB on this one for the first time. I agree 100% with AB. Yeah, so just to clear it up, they are in the same division. Uh, Tank has a WBA and uh, Devin has WBC. Exactly. All right. Um, Ned? You're on mute, Ned. <laughs> All right. First off, I want to say I disagree with G and Trail. Y'all forgetting the fact that AB was Mayweather's first love, yo. Oh, okay. Pause, 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 pause. Like, like AB was Mayweather's first love, or yeah. did you mean to say that the opposite way? Opposite, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mayweather was AB's first love. <laughs> pause. Mega pause, yo. Not in that type of way, but yo, he was big. But he was my big brother first. He was my big brother, so you know, AB just want, wants Mayweather. To pick oh, AB up. just jealous. He just wanted him to pick up his phone calls now. Like, yo, why don't you pick up my calls? I'll keep calling. They was just spot. They was just, he was just in the gym with him. He got a bunch of boys. He was just in the gym with him. Yeah, that, was, that was for sure. You know how, you know how Mayweather do it. Listen, probably. that's what it was. That's why he called him. He wasn't calling him a, a B-A-N when you invited him to the gym to spa. Yeah. He wasn't calling him that then. <laughs> and, 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 and you and, and Tank ain't cool, but you didn't say he was that for calling you that that. That's why I said it's, it's different. A.B. going about it in a different way because he invited you to come to the gym, to spa, and you came too. You didn't say, nah, because I'm beefing with Tate. You want to invite me to the gym to come in out there and work out? Nah, I ain't doing that. You a, you a B.A.S. But nah, he didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? I get what he's saying. Nah, nah, I agree, I agree, but like, AB got like honestly, I think he just he just wants that like that you know the relationship's a little 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 little. Why it's, not him? <laughs> it's strained. Their relationship strained, and he wants it back like the old days. But I feel like AB couldn't come keep himself composed, or he's not the type of fighter like Devin Haney is. That Floyd sees he can't work with him like he worked with Haney, or or Haney is not the type of fight like personality AB is, where AB's mouthing off. Money, all of this, like he's he, he's the he's the status. He wants the status without the work, without the hard work, without the grind. And with, with, with how Floyd addressed it was the proper way to do it. Like you know, I'm gonna keep you know. It's like I'm not gonna entertain my ex. You know, like whatever. Like nah. you know, he. <laughs> I'm going there. Nah, this is like yo, we, I'm moving on. I'm on to better things. You know, I got things to conquer. So, oh you know, my god! You <laughs> gotta move on. You gotta move on. It happened. You had a, your moment. You blew it. Exactly. That's what I'm. That's where I'm trying to say. Like A B, you're thinking about it from a whole different way than where Floyd's. I think that Floyd's looking at it from. He's not worried about y'all petty little Twitter finger beefs. He's not worried about none of that. that. That has nothing to do with him. You know what I'm saying? He's looking at something different. Yo, is it on me? It's on you, Kayla. Please. Love box. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to refer to the love box, yo. This is my first love box. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> welcome welcome, welcome to the love box. <laughs> I love love box. I just, I, I'm just going to make it clear that this right here, G, Kaden, Ned and Chill, this ain't a love box. That's what I said. I'm not <laughs> uh, talking about this is the first love box. Uh, no, nah, but on the real, yo, A B man. Yeah, this is what this is where you gotta stay in your lane. Exactly. I'ma get I'm gonna give a scenario as old as time in boxing. So a promoter walks in the ring. With one fighter, right? Promotes that fighter. Promotes the other fighter too, but he walks in the ring with one fighter, the champion. Holding his flag. Holding his flag. <laughs> the champion loses to the challenger. The challenger becomes a new champion. Please tell me where that promoter is standing. With that flag. With that. Standing <laughs> with, with the, the challenger. Flag. <laughs> Since the beginning, you've seen Don King, Bob Arum, all these guys. When you're the champion, they'll walk to the ring with you. They'll hold your flag. You're the A-side. As soon as you lose, they're on the side with the challenger. 
You don't even have to be a promoter. Look at Sam Watson's behind. Sam yeah. Watson got his two sons. <laughs> his two sons be with both, One of each both fighters. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Watson standing with the A side at the beginning of the fight. If the B side wins, Sam Watson standing with the B side. Like, come on, brother, let's go backstage. I knew you had it. I knew you had it. <laughs> yeah. We knew, we knew. We set this up for you, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't, don't forget to thank Al Heyman. Yeah, he, all right? He always was Al Heyman. Al Heyman. Al Heyman. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't call it, you know, B, A, S stuff then, right? It's okay for Don King to do it. It's okay for Bob Arum to do it. But once Floyd does it, then you're going to come at him that way. And that's what I mean by familiarity breeds contempt, right? When you look at someone that's like your contemporary or whatever, you don't, A, B, don't get that Floyd is above you. Mm -hmm. Floyd is above you, bro. In the ring, in the wallet, in status. When they introduced Floyd Mayweather in the ring, I don't know if you noticed this, Adrian Broner. When they introduced Manny Pacquiao in the ring, I don't know if you noticed, Adrian Broner. They say these words, needing no introduction anywhere in the civilized world. You know what that means? That's next level status. That's next level celebrity. That means anywhere where people own televisions, computers, electricity, and have access to television fights with... They need no introduction. People already know who they are. When they introduce Adrian Broner, they say Adrian the problem Broner. You know, like like I said, it, it, if it, it depends on who it is. If it's uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr., he usually says needing no introduction, the world over. Right? You watch you watching boxing when it was like uh, it's so like. Dude, you a celebrity, but you're not an A-lister, bro. You're no A-list celebrity. Floyd is otherworldly, bro. So what you got to do is this. One, realize you're not on the same level as Floyd. Two, realize that Floyd is a promoter. So anybody saying Floyd is slimy for training Devin, keep that same energy for everybody else. Why are you holding Floyd to a different standard? It's the same people who come at us when we talk about boxing. And they look at us and say, well, you guys won't step in the ring. Well, you guys are just cowards. Do you say that to Al Bernstein? Max Kellerman. Do you say that to Max Kellerman? Right? Do you say that to those guys? Dan Rayfield, do you say that to them? So why are you saying it to us? Because you're trained to think people that look like us can only talk about boxing if we be in the ring. Why? Because the commentators you usually see that look like us are former fighters. Andre Ward, George Foreman, Roy Man. Jones Jr., Antonio Tava, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. They won't give me that job. I got to go get punched in the face to get that job. You think I couldn't do it? But, they, but I got I to gotta, I gotta go get punched in the face to get that job. Meanwhile, Max Kellerman... I don't even know if Max Kellerman's ever lifted a weight in his life. He never got in a fight in his life. I don't know if Al Bernstein ever <laughs> got to a battle a rap. In his life. <laughs> he never got in a fight in his life. <laughs> Dan Rayfield, stop it. He never seen a buffet he didn't like. <laughs> right? But for some reason, when we speak about boxing, there's a problem. So mm -hmm. why are you holding us to a different standard? But the other question is, why are you holding Floyd to a different standard? Floyd is a promoter. So with that being said, I'm just going to drop the mic here. Yeah. I don't give a damn if Floyd walks in the ring with Tank and Devin Haney and Tank are fighting each other and Floyd walks in the ring with Tank and Devin Haney knocks Tank the hell out and then Floyd leaves with Devin Haney because that's <laughs> what he's supposed to do, you idiot. This is not, exactly, my uh, brother. This is not the streets. This is business. Come on, man. Get the hell out of here with that. I was just saying, man, do y'all watch boxing? <laughs> like, yo, come on. Nah, I, and I love and I love Adrian Broner. You know what I'm saying? Because he reminds me of me when I was younger. And if somebody was like, but I could say, like, and I'm a fan of him, but I could say that, yo, he needs to throw, I could be objective. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be a fangirl. I'm not going to say that, you know what I'm saying? This dude is right all the time because he's wrong most of the time. I just like him because he reminds me of the, the neighborhood where we come from. You know what I'm saying? That's why I like the kid. He just gives me some, it's other personal, other people I like too, like Fernando Vargas. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's other people that I have that's my favorites. You know, Thomas the Hitman Hearns. You know what I'm saying? People that, these are my favorite fighters, but I'm not going to say, oh, he didn't lose to Sugar Ray or Hagler didn't knock him out in the second round. I'm never going to be the But what's lose. funny about it, bro, is like, we have our favorites and like, it's funny because we like fighters who aren't even champions. Like, these people be like, man, boy, and forever. Like, I love, like, I don't like the little guys. You remember that? But I used to love Vic Darchini, you know? That used to be my dude. That's your guy. You know, like, yeah, go see Jose Arce. All exactly. these guys. I like guys. Look, I like the, the baby bull Diaz. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even want to give me trouble problems on that. No airtime for baby bull on this show. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I like fighters that ain't even champions, never even had a belt before. Just because, like, I love boxing. You know what I'm saying? We love boxing and we can be objective. You know, I'm never going to be a fanboy. My brother's never going to be a fan. We're going to tell you if the person's wrong, they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? And you, if you got a feeling you think that we're wrong, you tell us that we're wrong. You know what I'm saying? As long as you come in a respectful way, I'm gonna come back. I mean, and I'm gonna comment back to you in a respectful way. You did? Yeah. And one last thing, because Trill, I mean, Trill pointed out something, and G pointed out something, which is true. They're in the same weight division right now, but they're talking about Tanks going down to 130 and Devin's going up after his next yeah. fight. Oh yeah, I send you the link, G. You didn't get but, that link. But here's but here, but here's what I'll say about this. Tank, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Stay ready so you mm -hmm. don't have to get ready. Because it's one thing to say something. It's another thing to do it. And remember, Floyd is a promoter. Promoter first. Remember that. So uh, that's basically all I got to say Ooh, about Trying that. to throw him in. We're in with Lowe Machenko. Remember that? Floyd was trying to throw Tank in there with Lowe Machenko. And I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't shock me if he threw him in there with Devin. Being 100. The, you know, the, you never let him know what you're thinking. It's one of the, one of the, one of the rules of war. And he, he, he makes him comfortable saying, oh, yeah, they're never going to fight. And then, boom, <laughs> you're going to have to fight Devin. And I'm in his corner training. Unify at 135. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. And make 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 Tank come back up to 135 and make Devin stay and unify. That's gonna be that's gonna be the fina season finale of the finale. love. Box. <laughs> <laughs> season finale of the love box. Adrian Broner gonna be mad. He's gonna be jumping up and damn going crazy. It don't, even, it don't even involve him, he's gonna be mad. <laughs> I ain't even say nothing. To Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner, man, just get right. Adrian get Broner. Right, yo, and, and let your hands go. But he think he's slick. I see you in shape, A.B. I see you. He you see him in slick. shape. I see him eating Taco Bell. So I, I see him eating right. Taco Bell, too. I see him. But he think he playing around. He ain't blow up like the last time we that see him. That is true. Yeah, that is true. He, he look like he's been training. I know what he do. He trying to play a mind game. Hey, I'm on to your tricks, bro. <laughs> Never wear when Floyd drunk that big gulp. <laughs> drunk that big gulp, like bro, you know you ain't drinking no damn big gulp. What if you work out, you can have a cheat day. I mean, if it was his cheat day, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. it was his cheat day <laughs> <laughs> of the year. Yo, AB is okay. the funniest cat though. Wait, cause hold on, did you see when um AB was there? He was there with his son in the video, right? And he swam up a storm saying all types of ignorance. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, daddy. Like, yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> bro, 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 you know how we grew up. You know how with the older folks used to say it with us. Do as we do as I say, not as I do. That's that's exactly what he's doing. He's using all the swear words. Oh, I'm gonna F this up. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. F this up like a mother effer. His son goes, Can you pass me? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Exactly. We got to teach our kids better than us. That's the, that's the whole reason. We got to teach our kids. <laughs> do uh, as I say, not as I do. That's how we go. dying, bro. I couldn't even. I got to admit it. All right. So the next topic we're going to discuss uh, on the podcast. And the final topic, I'm going to share my screen. 
Ryan Garcia uh, does the body challenge with Francis Ngannou. Ngannou. Ngannou, sorry, Ngannou. And uh, take a look for yourself. So he's, uh, right now he's punching. And you can see uh, Francis. Chilling. Just laughing. <laughs> Gano's getting a, a, a stomach massage. You know what I'm nah. saying? <laughs> nah. I'm, I'm, I'm just playing. Rock, rock, man, look at Garcia's tied and, 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 you know, Ingrid was just laughing. That's what I see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, G, what are your thoughts on that, man? I will say this. <laughs> if, if, uh, a heavier brother threw that many punches at Ganu's stomach, even with the, the body shield. And Ganu would have said, yo, time out, I need a break. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yo, Trill disappeared. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let Trill go. I'm going to let Trill go last on this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yo, man, listen. You know what's crazy? This is... Because every time I see them young brothers, man, the, the little dudes, like the, the 130s, the 135s, Yo, like every time like they hit the mids or the heavy bag, it be sounding so loud, like bloom, blow, bloom, bloom, bloom. And I'm like, damn, yo, like they got that. They got the 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 hands of God, yo. And then I see that and I'm like, yo, man, do they really punch that hard? Like, you know what I mean? It just make me think, man. And I, I'm gonna keep it a buck. Like, you know, holding a mitts for people, like, even when you see like guys that are like really, really good, I'm gonna be honest, like. Was the one guy me and Katie used to train with? I think he was. I think he was one forty seven, right? Yeah, he was. Like, always with the Superman. Um, yeah, yeah, but when when he um, was real fast and like I'm telling you, when he hits the mitts, it sounds like lightning is striking. But it it's not really that powerful. Like it's crazy. Like so, like I could hold a mitt even for like uh, Ned, right? It doesn't make that noise like pow and all that stuff. But you could feel the difference. You could feel the force. So to me, I'm not surprised by this video, man. And it's not to downplay 135ers. It's just, let's just be real. Like, they're 135 pounds. So that's impressive for his size. But looking at Nganu and his reaction, in his mind, he's probably looking at it like how I'll be looking at it sometimes. Like, oh, this is cute. You know? <laughs> and, but it's no disrespect to the little brothers, man. So no disrespect to the little brothers. Yo, I'm t yo listen, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all, right? Even... One dude I train with, yo, he's like probably, like he could be super middle, maybe he could be light heavy. Sometimes, like yo, punch me in the side with my mitts, I don't feel nothing. Caden punches me on the side, bro, yo. After like the third punch, I'm like, yo, man, I don't know, you know what I mean? But and that's the difference because weight matters. Like we can front all we want. But the reality is, you know, the heavier you are, the harder you punch for the most part. Now, there could be outliers, which obviously they're, they're out there. But for the most part, a guy that's heavier, like Ngannou, he punches way harder than a guy smaller like uh, Ryan Garcia. Trill, don't dis don't, I, I meant no disrespect, Trill. It's all luck. <laughs> 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 All right, man. <laughs> Quote G, yeah, that was cute. And honestly, from from Ngannou's um reaction, it was more. It's, it's like it, I think he was fascinated by the speed, but also like like it, it, the paint. It was it, the the shots weren't phasing him. It's like this, like and Brian Garcia was just like ah, when the troll was. Tr I think I think he was trying so hard to like. Make him feel his power, but he <laughs> going his hardest. You could tell he put he went two fan mode. And yeah, didn't he was going so hard, and when he realized, like he's just smiling, it just like like it took it like it took him out of his game. But it, it, keep doing your thing, Ryan. We know you got the, that power at at, at one thirty five, and you know it's, it's, it's cool, yo. It's, it's, it's no, it's it's, it's, it's training, yo. I, I can't say much on it, but he did his thing. He did his thing, yo. And it's I will a, say this to the ad. Ryan Garcia, I'm pretty sure, could knock out a dude 200 plus pounds. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's not to discredit his power. It's just like if you had an opportunity to see a Ryan punch, you'll probably absorb that punch. 
it. I mean, and like, honestly, there's guys like AJ, even Tyson Fury, probably. Well, I don't know about Tyson Fury, but like AJ or Wilder, you will probably see that punch and it still drop you because the force is just so much. That's the difference. It's just levels to power. What is it? it honestly, it, without the padding, like, any guy, any guy looking at Ryan, like, oh, yeah, I could take him on my size, six, oh, whatever, in 200, 300 pounds. He's turning your insides into liquid, man. You go, <laughs> he's turning it into liquid. Like, that's the point blank theory. Let's not get it twisted. Like, like this, it's just it's a training. We, he was training, but we don't want to go jump in front of him, like, yo, you going, you, you and Ganu without no, without no safety yet. But <laughs> that's it. That's all. All right, man. So I'll say this: a few things. One, I like that dude in Ganu, man. He's he seems like a cool cat, so I, I like him. I seen him like with Mike Tyson and seeing with Ryan Garcia. Like you see him around, he's always just having fun, having a good time. I've never seen him fight before, but you know what? Just seeing like the type of person he is, it makes me want to check out like some of his fights. He, he got seemed, power. He got power. He be knocking dudes. Yeah, out. he seemed like he seemed like a cool guy. Ryan Garcia. You know, he's a little small dude, man. What do you want from him? Yeah. He, he <laughs> He's a small dude, man. You know, he tried. He tried. Um, you know, I just got to – it was cute, you know. It was it was cute to us. It was funny to Nganu. <laughs> it was so cute to trail. <laughs> but in Ryan Garcia's defense, he did have one to shield, and he was pushing him back. So I'll give I'll give Ryan that, but you know, <laughs> he was pushing them back. <laughs> they're weight classes for a reason. If anything, yeah. this demonstrates why they're weight classes. Uh, you have a guy who's training, a guy who's fit, a guy who's a fighter, and even with uh, Ryan Garcia throwing everything in those punches, in 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 and, and trust me, if you ever wore that shield, like it does absorb, but you still can feel it. You still like, feel it. You can exactly. still feel it. Like you, if, if you get hit with some, and you still you can still feel it. Um, just to give Ryan some pointers, though, he should have went to the to the side. He never went to the side. He stayed right there. He should have gave a few to them sides. It didn't seem a little bit shot. Um, yeah. but I respect the kid Ryan Garcia. He's still young. He's still growing. Um, but when it's all said and done, it's all fun and games. They they had to have known that he wasn't going to be able to really, you know, do any damage to Ngannou. And Ngannou was just laughing and having fun with him. And Ryan Garcia, he tried. And you and you can't get mad at that. And it was just all fun and games. So, it is what it is. Trill, man, you, you've been waiting and debating. And <laughs> I can't hear you guys. I just want to put that on record. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Like, what did you say? You guys. You know, catch us in the alley like Chisora. You know what I mean? <laughs> All you guys, back in the building. <laughs> All three of you. All, All three of y'all. All three of y'all. <laughs> Put some respect on the little guy's name. First of all, when dude smiled, he smiled because, oh, you got me. That was one of those. <laughs> hey. <laughs> He wasn't expecting to feel a little sting. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that look. Sting. That was hey, that look. Hey, look. true. I'm just gonna say this. You ever got stung by a bee? You get a little sting, but you be like, right, I'll be all right. You know what I mean? Listen, <laughs> he was backing, he backed his, he backed him up into a wall. Okay? That's some. That's some force. He packed it. Oh, I'm not <laughs> it only took him like 50 punches. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if Yo, a he, was, punch, he, was he was smiling, but he was crying on the inside. <laughs> he he would have stood there. I done seen guys, I done seen other fighters with guys holding the day, and they just stood there. Like Nate Jones, right? Exactly. They just stood there. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> You see your face, do it again, do it again, do it again. <laughs> Once he got hit, he felt that. Listen. Yo, Trill, no, yo, Trill, my screen went out. My screen went out. What happened when he got hit, Trill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hold on, for our listening audience that are listening to this on, um, on, on like Spotify and, and Google Play and stuff, Trill is demonstrating what in God. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he look like. What a cheesy What's he got pop? <laughs> we gotta respect the little guys. Uh, we gotta respect the little guys. I say this for one. You know what I'm saying? My son is my witness, right? When my son was boxing, we used to go to different gyms so he can get some sparring. We went to Holbrook, right? My son, baby boy is right here. Come here, baby boy. I ain't lying. My baby boy. <laughs> We used to go to different gyms so he can get some sparring. Tommy Ray. Good. We went to Holbrook, a gym in Holbrook where we had a fighter. His name was Kirk. Shout out to him. My son was sparring some younger kid. But to show off, <laughs> to show that I still got it, I hopped in there with this young contender at 154 pounds. At this time, I was like 200. When I got in there, I'm moving him around. Felt like. Next thing you know, <laughs> felt great the first round. Put my weight on him, felt like I was moving around. After that, he felt was like all over theory. the place. Felt like theory. Felt like <laughs> we did four rounds. I got beat up for three rounds in front of my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, that just hurt me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My son was that was Trey Hunt, but his put in, they were stinging. They were coming. He didn't knock you out, but they were stinging. I was like, listen, for now on, I'm going to respect the little guys. <laughs> put some respect on the little guys' names. Because these guys, they fast, they hit hard, and they punch and sting. It's like being in a socket, getting hit with a socket. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's different type of power. Oh. Put some respect on these guys' names. These guys can punch, and they can knock out a grown 200-something pound man if they get them leverage. No, Trevor, the funniest so part is when you gave this story. Yo, you me? just walked away, yo. That's the funniest part about the whole thing. <laughs> what you say yourself is like, I'm out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, I sent, I sent him away. I gave him a kiss and sent him away. That's <laughs> 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 oh. hey, That's hey, a true so, story. That's a true story. So, uh, why is there a hey, zombie man? What's going on? So, no, zombie Ray. No, man, I'm just showing how y'all guys. This is the artist on the intro. This is the artist on the intro. Yeah. Baby, baby. Zombie Ray. Hey, so, Ned, I got a question for you. Yeah. What would you rate Ryan Garcia's power after watching that video? <laughs> 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 uh, Ned, hold on, Ned. Can you keep it up. Watch your mouth, Ned. <laughs> hey, Ned. Hey, Ned. Hey, Ned, don't be, don't be influenced by none of Trill's campaigning. What would you do? <laughs> I, I, give, I got, got to give it like a 90, maybe 95, uh, 90. Go uh, ahead, Ned, 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 talk that talk, Ned. 90. This is why you got to get Pacquiao 50. Nah, hmm. Ned, Ned, you know, it's, it's different when you in the Hush your mouth. Exactly. <laughs> okay? That's why you're on mute. You on mute. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> All right, man, you can talk again. Go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's uh, y'all, I, that really started can... with this segment, man. <laughs> oh. Y'all guys are going to put some respect on a little guy's name. All the little guys, come on, in the comment. I'm going down to 135 on y'all. Please. <laughs> okay, 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 you know what's the funny part? Watch the next time we go to the gym. Watch a bunch of these little dudes like, yo, what's up? Y'all, let's I know, I know. The little dudes is going to be coming, man. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't, I don't want to go to jail <laughs> for attempt to murder. You know, I'm just going <laughs> to You know what I'm saying? You know, another thing, I know, I know a lot of comments, too. A lot of com a lot of comments be in there like, um, like, uh, we don't, we don't work out or, or we don't, like, for example, uh, my brother Caden over here, he could be world champion. Um, People don't man. understand that, bro. So, I'm not even gassing Kaden. Yeah. Yo, that's a dangerous brother, man, for real. Listen, I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> a saying. dangerous dude, man. You know? I appreciate it, but I don't want to have to knock someone out because they're trying to test me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people understand. Man. Outside of just doing this podcast, we really be in there. Like, you know what I'm saying? I really work out, and I've really been – I've really sparred. I've really been in the gym. My brother Kaden could have been world champion. Gee, a lot of people give him slack. 
You know what I'm saying? A lot of people be like, oh, man. Yo, listen, you ain't got to tell them. I'm going to say, I surprise them. I got I surprise them. We say, like, oh, G, this, fat, this, that. G is one of the fastest young. Listen, he's a big man, but he got hands. So I'm watch him right now. I'm the Haitian Ruiz, bro. <laughs> 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 I was going to say that. Yo, there was a guy who said something. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. You look at G. G is fast, and he got power, and he can move on his feet. We got the we got footage, and even the footage you can look at is old. Exactly. Uh, everyone's better now. Like I'm trying to tell you, it just but but it's not about that because we train to stay in shape, to stay fit, or whatever. But like we when we when we're boxing bros, that's what it's about. We actually go to the gym. We actually train people. We train. We're working on things. So we 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 train. We train people out of box and other things. So it's not just that. But I don't like to talk about that stuff. Yep. And you know, and, like and, and you see, and they going after Stavern next. You know what I'm saying? Putting that in there with Stavern. <laughs> please, Yo, please like, like and subscribe. Yeah, what say, well, well, we, well, we like to just talk about uh, boxing or whatever, but, you know, in, in the comment sections, I don't, I don't care what people say. We, you know, I'm not, not saying yeah. I don't care, but I don't care about what haters say. Like, I'm just saying that we live boxing even after the podcast. True. We live, we live boxing. So please like and subscribe. Please check out our podcast on all major streaming services and hit up our Instagram and Twitter. Our Facebook is full. Our Facebook is full. So please, please hit up our Instagram and Twitter. We appreciate you so our much. Our Facebook is full? Our Facebook is full. Hey. <laughs> so please hit up our Instagram and Twitter. Please, we respect and we got nothing but love for y'all. Much respect. It's the Boxing Bros. Peace. We've been defending like we're gonna fight, sure. Anything to make the crowd happy.